More than a decade after the last space shuttle took flight, NASA is almost ready to launch a rocket once again. The most powerful rocket NASA ever built, the Space Launch System, is designed to bring the Artemis missions to the moon starting with Artemis 1 this spring. The Mega Moon rocket with the Orion spacecraft atop arrived at NASA's Kennedy Space Center Launch Pad 39B on Friday in preparation for a final test before the Artemis 1 mission. Stacked on the mobile launcher and mounted on the crawler transporter for a journey from the vehicle assembly building to Pad 39B, it took 10 hours and 28 minutes for SLS and Orion to reach the launch pad 6.8 kilometers away. The trip began at 5.47 p.m. on March 17, and the 98 meters tall, 1.6 million kilograms rocket and spacecraft traveling at a velocity of 1.3 kilometers per hour arrived at the pad at 4.15 a.m. on March 18. The biggest next step for the mission is a wet dress rehearsal, which will see the mission team fuel up SLS on the launch pad and then go through a practice countdown that will stop at T-minus 10 seconds, just before the core stage's four RS-25 engines would ignite during an actual launch. They will practice every phase of the countdown, including weather briefings, pre-planned holds in the countdown, conditioning and replenishing the propellants as needed, and validation checks. The wet dress rehearsal is set to occur in early April. After the rehearsal, NASA will conduct additional testing at the pad before the launch vehicle is slowly rolled back to the vehicle assembly building on the crawler. Inside the assembly building, technicians will extend platforms to re-establish access to several parts of the rocket and spacecraft. Team members will assess how well the wet dress rehearsal and additional testing went and if any changes must be made to the vehicles before launch. That information will also help the mission team determine the final timeline for the launch. According to NASA, the launch debut is expected to occur no earlier than May. The first in a series of increasingly complex missions, Artemis 1, will provide a foundation for human deep space exploration and demonstrate our commitment and capability to extend human existence to the moon and beyond prior to the first flight with crew on Artemis 2. Space startup Astra successfully returned to flight on March 15, a little more than a month after its last launch failed mid-flight. On Tuesday, the 13-meter-tall launch vehicle, named Rocket 3.3, lifted off from the Pacific Spaceport Complex on Kodiak Island. The mission, dubbed LV-0009, was the first in a multi-launch agreement Astra announced with launch services provider Spaceflight Industries Inc. The rocket's five kerosene-fueled Delphin engines fired nearly three minutes to guide the launcher south from Kodiak Island. Then the rocket shed its payload fairing, and the second stage separated to light its either engine for a nearly six-minute burn to accelerate into orbit. Astra officials quickly confirmed the rocket reached orbit less than 10 minutes after liftoff, but the company waited to declare success until ground teams began contacting the CubeSats deployed on the mission. It's been an exciting morning. Uh, we have just started to hear back from our customers' uh, payloads, and uh, we have great news to report. Uh, the payloads have started uh, to communicate with ground stations. Our customers are calling us, indicating that uh, satellites are alive. They're talking, which means they've been successfully deployed. It's not clear how many satellites were deployed into orbit. Astra has disclosed two of the mission's payloads, but there were apparently more. One payload, called ISTAR S4, developed by Near Space Launch, was designed to remain attached to the second stage to test inter-satellite communications technologies the company plans to use on future satellites. The second payload was ORSAT-0, a CubeSat developed by the Portland State Aerospace Society. The next Astra mission is scheduled for no earlier than April of this year. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope is sharpening its vision and is well on the way to cracking mysteries of the universe. Launched in December 2021 and arriving at the station about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth in January, the observatory has been preparing itself for scientific observation ever since. NASA announced on March 16 that scientists completed the telescope's latest phase of alignment, called fine phasing. In other words, the telescope perfectly aligned its 18 hexagonal mirror segments to gather light from distant objects and deliver it to its instruments without issue. When the mirror alignment process started in early January, the ground team pointed the telescope at HD84406, a distant star in our Milky Way galaxy. The star was chosen not for its scientific significance, but purely for its brightness and location. At the beginning of the alignment process, the telescope was delivering 18 individual images of the star, with each of the primary mirror segments acting as a telescope on its own. The new image released on March 16 after completing the fine phasing stage shows a bright shining amber-colored star emanating streams of light across the universe. 
Even more interesting than the star itself is its background, revealing dozens of specks and dots, each a distant galaxy that was previously out of reach. The agency also released a selfie image using a lens tailored to photograph the primary mirror to assist engineers during alignment. Over the next six weeks, the team will proceed through the remaining alignment steps before final science instrument preparations. Webb's first full-resolution imagery and science data will be released in the summer. Three Russian cosmonauts arrived at the International Space Station on March 18, wrapping up a three-hour-long journey on a Soyuz spacecraft. A Russian Soyuz MS-21 spacecraft carrying cosmonauts Oleg Artemyev, Denis Matveev, and Sergei Korsakov embarked on a planned six-month stay on board the space station on Friday from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The launch marked the first time three Russian cosmonauts flew together to the International Space Station. Three hours and ten minutes after lifting off, the spacecraft carrying the cosmonauts docked with the station's Pritchell module as both vehicles were flying over eastern Kazakhstan. About two and a half hours later, after the passageway between the station and Soyuz was pressurized, two sets of hatches were opened, and the three Soyuz astronauts, dressed in yellow flight suits with blue highlights, floated one by one into the ISS. Artemyev, the Soyuz commander, was asked about the colors during the hatch opening ceremony. He replied that there was an abundance of yellow fabric in the warehouse, so that's why they had to wear yellow. Not everyone believes this explanation, and some speculate that it could be a show of support for Ukraine, which Russia invaded on February 24. More visitors to the space station are on their way. SpaceX intends to launch the AX-1 mission on April 3, which will send four private citizens to the orbiting laboratory for an eight-day stay. Elon Musk's company is also set to launch NASA's Crew-4 astronaut mission on April 19. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. On March 15, for the second time ever, SpaceX stacked Starship 20 and Booster 4 using the rocket catching and stacking arm installed on the orbital launch tower. This time SpaceX was able to complete the stacking process many times faster than it did on February 9. SpaceX took around three and a half hours from the start of the lift to Starship fully resting on Super Heavy during the last month's stacking operation. On the other hand, SpaceX was able to lift, translate, lower, and attach Starship to Super Heavy in just over an hour on Tuesday. Furthermore, SpaceX accomplished this feat without the claw-like device designed to grab and stabilize the Super Heavy booster during the stacking procedure. In February, first the tower arms grabbed Ship 20, lifted it close to 100 meters above the ground, rotated it over Super Heavy, and briefly paused. The ship's quick disconnect arm then swung in and extended its claw to grab onto hard points near the top of the booster to secure it before lowering the ship onto it. But two weeks ago, SpaceX removed both of the quick disconnect arm's claws for some unknown reason. As a result, on March 15, SpaceX stacked the ship and the booster without the help of the stabilizing claws. This implies that the claw is either entirely unnecessary or is only required when attempting stacking operations in heavy windy conditions. The next day, on March 16, SpaceX began testing the fully stacked Starship rocket for the first time ever. SpaceX appears to have put the launch system through a fairly limited cryogenic proof for its first fully integrated test. The booster was filled with approximately 10 to 20 percent and Starship around 25 to 50 percent of the way with liquid nitrogen during the test. It's likely that the main purpose of this first full-stack cryoproof was to ensure that all the systems required to fuel Starship on top of Super Heavy were working as expected. That's no small feat given that Starship is both the tallest rocket and largest upper stage ever assembled. On March 18, SpaceX attempted a second full-stack cryoproof test, but for some unknown reason, it was aborted shortly after the liquid nitrogen filling began. On March 19, SpaceX de-stacked Ship 20 and Booster 4 using the rocket catching and stacking arms. Over the coming days, SpaceX is likely to attempt an increasingly ambitious series of tests with Booster 4 and Ship 20. This could include the first ever static fire test of Booster 4 involving a couple of Raptor engines, which will eventually lead to a full 29-engine static fire test. Later, SpaceX Mary stacked the ship and booster to perform a wet dress rehearsal with methane and oxygen propellant instead of liquid nitrogen. There's even a chance that SpaceX will try to static fire booster 4 after the wet dress rehearsal, while ship 20 remains on top. It is important to note that, although SpaceX is rapidly testing ship 20 and booster 4 for the upcoming orbital test flight, the company has yet to receive approval from the FAA to conduct an orbital flight from Starbase. 
The FAA has stated that the environmental assessment of the launch site required to issue a launch license to SpaceX will be completed by March 28. SpaceX already has FAA environmental approval to launch Starship from the East Coast. And the company has begun building a second Starship orbital launch tower at NASA's Kennedy Space Center Historic Launch Complex 39A in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Piling and concrete pouring works for the orbital launch tower and launch mount are in progress at Pad 39A. SpaceX has also begun assembling Starship's second orbital launch tower section at its Kennedy Space Center Roberts Road facility. SpaceX has put together the first tower section, and now they are working on the second. Close inspection of Section 1 reveals that the rails through which the rocket catching and stacking arm will travel have been pre-installed on the columns. It was only after all the tower sections were assembled that those rails were installed on the launch tower at Starbase. Furthermore, the lower stop points for the tower arms were also pre-installed on first tower section at Kennedy. They were added much later in the construction process at the Starbase. Once fully prefabricated at the Roberts Road facility, the tower sections will be transported to Pad 39A for stacking. Last month, Elon Musk offered to display one of the Starship prototypes at the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport, which is near the road that leads directly to the Starbase launch site. A forward flap from Starship serial number 8 arrived at the airport a few days ago and was raised as a flag outside the airport. This flap was one of the few parts of serial number 8 that barely survived the explosive landing in December 2020. It remains to be seen what other Starship components will be delivered to the airport in the coming days. At Starbase, tile installation works on the nose cone of Starship 24 is nearing completion. In contrast to previous nose cones, which only house the oxygen header tank, this upgraded nose cone will house both the methane and oxygen header tanks. The new flattened Starship dome was recently spotted alongside the old-style domes at the shipyard. This new dome design not only reduces the number of stainless steel pieces required, but also increases the ship's payload capacity and oxygen tank volume. Works on the upgraded booster header tank are also ongoing at the construction site. This short cylindrical header tank is meant to take the place of the old long tube-like header tank. White Bay construction is progressing, and it appears that the section currently being assembled is the White Bay's final segment. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.